Center for Agribusiness and Economic Development and we'll go through the slides and you all will see that even if you may not know me, I feel pretty sure that you know the Center for Agribusiness and Economic Development even if you're not for sure yet that you do. Um, the study was called The Economic Contribution of Cotton Production in Georgia and my co-authors were Kent Wolf, who's the director of our center. If, Kent, would you mind standing up or at least letting everybody? That's Kent Wolf. And Don Shirley, I'm not sure if Don is in here. But you guys know Don Shirley, so he was also a co-author on the study. The Cotton Commission um, commissioned this study to take a look at um, some of the economic uh, contribution of cotton production in Georgia not just from the standpoint of the sales, but through the multiplier effects as well. So that gives you an idea of what we were looking at. <coughs> Let me just tell you a little bit about the center. Uh, we're, we're a center of the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, and we're, we combine the missions of research and extension. So that is how we end up doing a project such as this. We're primarily economists and researchers. Uh, public service faculty, so we work with the public. We also work with <laughs> students, other educators. We serve Georgia in that way, mostly by providing data, but a lot of uh, other analysis as well. Let me mention some things that we do as a center that I feel pretty certain you all have heard of. Uh, Georgia Market Maker which is an interactive website connecting producers and consumers. If you have not seen Georgia Market Maker, you may want to check it. Really the easiest way is to just Google Georgia Market Maker. It will pull up. It's a collaborative project that we work with other states around the nation. Uh, not all states are connected, but there is a national market maker site that helps to connect producers and consumers throughout the U.S. As part of Market Maker, we also uh, have conducted and are still in the process of conducting a farm to food bank pilot and it, some of you may have heard of that as well. We're working with farmers so that nothing goes to waste and if there is any left over, it will go to a food bank. And that's a pilot program that we are, our center is working with Feeding America and Georgia Market Maker on that. Uh, the County Guide, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the County Guide. We, we are uh, instrumental in that too with the Carl Vinson Institute of Government that are our partners in that publication. The Farmgate Value Report, again something I feel like you all are very familiar with, and the Farmgate Value Report is very important. We are, we are unique as a state in conducting this report, this survey, and it provides value, valuable information for not only the state as a whole but for every county as well. And the, uh, the study was actually based on figures from the Farmgate Report. We'll get into that a little bit more. One other thing really quick that we do, um, the Flavor of Georgia Food Product Contest. We also publish a directory. Some of you may have heard of that. We are currently in uh, registration right now, so if you know someone that has a fabulous Georgia food product, have them uh, submit their product. The Ag Forecast meetings and publications coming up starting this week. And so if you haven't registered yet for an Ag Forecast meeting near you, you may want to check into that. We also do county demographic profiles and presentations for individual counties, uh, presentations about economic importance. We're part, uh, our data feeds into the Georgia statistics system. And then again, like I mentioned, we conduct a lot of <coughs> customized economic studies, such as this study, uh, the economic importance of LARDA, a lot of feasibility studies. Um, so all across the board, we conduct economic studies. So, I'm sure you, got, you guys have heard of at least one of these things, right? Yeah, okay. Well, now you know. That's, that's who we are, and we're here to serve Georgia in that way. Let me tell you a little bit about the background of the study. Is that whistle hurting anyone's ears? I can hear it just a little bit, but you guys okay? All right. Um, the most recent farm gate value, which is 2012, which has just recently come out, uh, cotton production was approximately $1.3 billion for the state of Georgia, and it accounted for about 9.4% of the total farm gate value and 40% of all row and forage crop value for that year. So that gives you an idea of the kind of numbers that we're talking about from the farm gate value report. Um, for the most recent six years, 
cotton production has ranked either second or third among all the agricultural enterprises in value and first among row and forage crops in Georgia. So that gives you a little bit of context. Now we're going to look at the economic contribution of cotton production and I'll explain to you a little bit before we talk about the final numbers so that you know what we really looked at. There's different ways to measure and you, it's important to know what we did look at and what we did not look at. So I'm going to walk you through these next few slides so that you'll know. First of all, I want to make sure that you understand what we mean by economic contribution. It's um, not just the cotton production, as I mentioned before, but it's all the things that are important to bring that cotton production to sale. So it's the inputs, the ag services, and then the people that work in all those industries also purchase things as employees. So it incorporates, incorporates all of those effects. Uh, for example, some of the supporting infrastructure includes things like ginning, warehousing, transportation, input supply firms, machinery and equipment, sales and service, financing. We could, we could name multiple industries that it requires to bring the cotton output. And I, I always laugh and say the reason I became an economist is because I like picture books and I can always do pictures that explain things. But this, to me, is a great graphic that explains what we do in this type of study about this is how the economy works, this graphic. You can see all the arrows that go back and forth. They have the farmers, they have the construction workers, the money's in the middle, uh, there's teachers, there's medical, uh, medical staff. It shows you that different sectors of the economy work both ways. They buy things and they sell things. In economics, in terms of this model, we call those backwards linkages and forwards linkages, forward linkages. So if you think about backward linkages, that is what we're looking at in this study, which means all the things that it takes as inputs and services to get the cotton production out there, to get it out and sold. It does not include the forward linkages, which means everyone that buys that cotton and uses it as inputs into their goods and services, into their goods primarily. So that gives you an idea of what this study looks at. That's the piece of the market that we look at. Um, we hope in the future to, to look at the forward linkages as well, but just bear in mind that this is the backward linkages, the backward arrows of the cotton production section, sector. Some of the basics about the study, uh, it was based on the 2011 farm gate value because that was the most current at the time, which was $1.5 billion in output. This is a little bit different than what you hear about an economic impact study. It's not exactly the same. This is an economic contribution or economic importance study. An economic impact study only really looks at marginal impacts and the only way to use one of those is if you want to look at new dollars. An economic contribution study takes a look at the role of a particular sector within the economy. So what we'll look at is the magnitude of the cotton production sector the industries that supply inputs to that production, and then the spending from the households uh, from all of those sectors, like I told you. Just bear in mind, this is not a net economic benefit study. Uh, it doesn't measure social benefits or, you know, what, mi what might accrue to our state as a result of having cotton production. There's not everything can be measured with an economic model, but it does give you an idea to help people to think and know the magnitude of the cotton production sector. I'm not sure how well these numbers show up for you all in the, on the big screen. Sometimes you lose a little resolution. But overall in the state, um, I'll, I'll, I'll read the numbers to you um, just basically. Uh, we primarily focus on, focus on output, which is the same as sales or revenue, and employment. Those are the primary things that we focus on. Now, directly in employment, which means the cotton production sector, without counting all the backward linkages, accounted for about 7,300 jobs. Excuse me, print gets a little small. About 7,300 jobs, and as we said, about 1.5 billion in output. When you incorporate all of the other effects from the sectors we talked about, all of those backward linkages that we learned about, um, and the, don't forget the spending from the employees that work in both the cotton production sector and the backward linked sectors, 
the total is, effect is about 15,400 jobs. So that gives you an idea in terms of jobs, uh, cotton production for 2011. Now the output or sales piece is a $1.5 billion direct output from the cotton sector from, their farm, from the farm gate value, but overall the effect is $2.5 billion. So if you want to think multiplier effects, it's a similar approach. It's, it's a way of thinking about it. It's $2.5 billion in output resulting from the contribution of the cotton production sector. Another interesting aspect about a, a contribution study is to look at which sectors are prim primarily affected. Of course, cotton farming is affected, um, but an, another top affected industry is the support activities for agriculture and forestry. That's the way it's named in our model. Um, that's some of the industries that feed into the cotton production sector, those backward linked industries. And the effect on those industries was over uh, 2,300 jobs. So just the support agricultural industries uh, provided a large number of that impact. Um, some of the other, the top 10 is what I have in this chart. It includes real estate establishments, food service and drinking places, maintenance and repair, non-residential, the monetary authorities or the banks, any kind of credit uh, activities, wholesale trade businesses, transportation by truck, office of physicians, dentists, and health practitioners, and also employment services. So that's the types of industries that are affected by having a cotton production sector in Georgia and from where they buy their inputs to bring that production. Any questions? Sorry, I hate to just read numbers to you, but that's, that's, the, that's the big impact here. Now, I know many of you probably cannot read the fine print on this map. I know I can't. Uh, but the color tells the story. The darker colors, the dark red, is the counties that had the, the largest portion of contribution for the economy from cotton production. When we took a look at the Georgia economy and the impacts, we really wanted to see how it breaks down by county as well because it's interesting to look at it by the state, but it's also important to look at it by county. The numbers with the lightest colors had the lowest economic contribution from cotton production and all the way up ranking in the colors, uh, slightly darker yellow, then green, then blue, and then red. Uh, the percentages of the, the first kind of, I guess, medium yellow kind of color is less than 1%. The green is 1 to 2 percent of the economy, the local economy. The blue is 3 to 7 percent, approximately 7, just under. And then the red counties are 7 percent or greater as a portion of that county's total economy. So that gives you an idea when you look across the counties as to where the impact of, county product, of cotton production is highest across the state of Georgia. That's all I have for my presentation, but uh, Richie said that I have a couple of minutes for questions. So anybody have a question about any of these numbers, want to go over something again, don't hesitate to ask. I may need some help if I can't hear the question. Anybody have a question? Excellent. All right, there's a quiz now, so put away your papers. <laughs> Oh, wait, do we have questions now? <laughs> um, that is all that I have then, and I will leave this Cotton County map up until the next speaker comes up. Oh, here we go. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Please don't hesitate to ask me if you have questions.